Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before we get into it with our guest here today, well, first of all, we have two guests, really. We have Shannon and we have her dog on the podcast, so everyone just, oh, come on. Oh. The dog's name is Oakley, and she's just in, I mean, she's just chilling out, everyone, so enjoy that, at least. I mean, I love to have animals on my podcast. I'm making I'm making my own podcast segment, really, that's going to be just like all the dogs and, and cats that I've had in the podcast, but... I mean, Shannon is coming to us all the way from the Great White North. It is Canada, so at least we have another guest that knows what cold actually, you know, feels like. She's also a registered a veterinary technician, and she's a bodybuilder, so she's she's doing a lot right now. And I, you know, it, it makes me just with my simple job and doing this seem kind of a little, you know, embarrassed enough as it is. But you know, in my, I'm not even talking about the way that she looks right now as compared to my off season look. But she's on here to give us her, you know, bodybuilding journey story, and you know, just talk all things health and fitness. But most importantly, she's our current guest, Shannon. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, I ask this to every single guest. What is the weather like for you today? Cold as hell. <laughs> it's about minus eight right now. So it's real cold, real crunchy. The wind just hurts when you see it, when you feel it. <laughs> so being that it's like that weather around here too, how do you deal with that with your dog too? Because with my dog, like it's like, I'm not going to take it on a walk. Does your dog just basically just have to realize that it's going to be like staying indoors for, or do you just brave it for like a couple of minutes a day and take it on a walk? You gotta do it. She's a Doberman, so she's spun out. She's got her parka. She's got her boots. She's got her scarf. You gotta wrap her all the way up, and we go. She, this thing, holy jeez, you can take her for miles, and she just wants to go and go and go. So if I don't, then I'm crazy in here. Again, there's so many things about living in the cold that people do not understand. That is one of the. That's probably one of the worst things. I mean, as great as having a dog is, having to go outside once a day, you know, and just be like, okay, we're, we're gonna have to do this. But before we get into all that winter stuff, because I don't want to depress half the viewers. Like I told you, I have guests from Texas on here that are like, oh, it's 40 degrees outside, I'm gonna die, and it's like, well, that, yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Well. Why don't you Why don't you give us your backstory on what really got you started working out and how that led you becoming a bodybuilder? Yeah, for sure. Um... So I was always an athlete too, grew up, you know, playing traveling leagues, competitive sports, anything you can name, um, playing high level of everything, you know, from soccer to volleyball. I was an elite gymnast for years, kind of dabbled into everything. So it was a bit of a natural transition. Um, you know, it was actually funny recently because um, I won my pro card. I had some parents reach out of girls that I've played with over the years, you know, that have seen me since I was like eight years old being like, you know, I always knew you had that edge. And like, I just knew you were going to be the one to kind of get to that level. So that was really cute to, to see stuff like that. But, uh, you know, you get to university and your schedule is slammed. So then varsity sports go off the table, but then you need something else. And I found the gym and I was like, oh, you know, working out, this is kind of cool. And Instagram had just started being a thing. So you're seeing competitors and, and bodybuilding, you know, I, I knew about it. I've, I've got friends, you know, around here that have done it for years, you know, much older. So it was cool. And then I was like, you know, I could probably do that and did it once. And that was it. Like it was history after that. I was addicted. It's funny how most of these orange stories really do tend down to like, you know what? I think I could do that. Maybe I, 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 I could give that a try. And then it just, and then it just goes on from there. So that, that is yeah. great. And I mean, do you really think that that background in sports really did help you with that? Because, I mean, I've had guests on here that have never, you know, played sports their entire lives. And then I have guests like you that, like you said, were elite level gymnasts for a while and then did all these sports. That has to at least have helped you when it comes to developing. sort. Because, like, especially that gymnast body, I mean, it makes things, it seems to make things a little bit easier to transition into bodybuilding having that, especially a gymnastics background. Yeah, I mean, the sports played a role physically to an extent. Like, obviously, I had a bit of a base and and, you know, some of the knowledge about what biomechanically I could do and needed to do. But I think the biggest thing that I took from it was the discipline, you know, that snowballed into it, you know, having that discipline and, and learning, you know, what you need to do and to be successful. And it's all you, you know, it's the same with sports. You are in control. If you're not practicing and you're not getting better, well, you're not going to win. So it was definitely something that I took big time was the discipline. That's the biggest thing. And did you have any misconceptions or reservations about the sport of bodybuilding before you got into it? Because like, unfortunately the general public, there are so many myths about the sport and so many people just don't understand other than just the few basic things about the sport. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, no, I can say wholeheartedly. I didn't have any sort of misconception. There was no negative connotations in my mind towards it. Now, of course, there's tons of people around me that give off that opinion that see it and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, especially my mom was like, what the heck are you doing? You're doing what to yourself? You want to, you want to look like what? And that was something that I also kind of 
had to push aside. But for me on my own, I looked at the sport and I thought it was the coolest thing. And I was like, I can freaking do that. It is so fascinating. And like I said, the rest was history once I started, really. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, we talked about this briefly and it's the number one myth and stereotype that I love to bust. You know, there's still so many women. And like you said, too, there are even guys that have come up to you and said, you know, like, hey, you know, I want to get in shape, but I don't want to look like that. This assume that like, if they touch one weight, they're just going to Hulk out. And it's like, first of all, if I had that type of self-confidence, I would be the CEO of a fortune 500 company by now. And you know, I would, I would spend my entire life savings to train with you then. Cause you have found the secret that everybody's looking for. But did you ever have that fear when you were getting started? And even if you didn't, I mean, I bet you still hear that all the time. How do you like to respond to that? Yeah. So, I mean, when I respond to that now, it's usually, I, I laugh and I'm like, don't worry. Like it takes a whole lot. And I find now I'm more into the educating part of it. So when someone brings something like that up, I'm more apt to be like, you know, it takes X, Y, and Z, like, don't worry, you know, we'll get you started with a little bit of consistency and things like that. Whereas before I used to just be like, Oh, get out of my face. Like, just shut up. <laughs> like, you know, comments like that. I just thought were just so stupid because I was getting started and I was trying to get big and it was so hard. So you hear something like that. And I'm like, Trust me, I am in the thick of it. I am not getting big that fast. Like, come on, it's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. And if it does happen to you, yeah, more more power to you. But this is also so much more of a mental sport than it is a physical sport, and people do not understand that, that, like, they'll just assume that they'll just see the physical changes and be like, oh, my God, you know, Shannon, you look great. They won't realize, you know, the mental changes that have happened as well, and that's a 100 times more important. And it's just because, you know, most people don't understand that, but – what were some of the, what's your mental journey been like for you through all this too? Because I mean, that is something that just weighs so much more on a person than, than anything they do physically. Absolutely. I mean, full disclosure, um, in the beginning, it was a bit of a roller coaster, right? Um, as I mentioned with the extrinsic opinions and things like that, especially when you're kind of impressionable and as a, as a woman, you're still trying to find your own. So, you know, having people kind of looking at it like, oh, it's really cool was one thing, but then you know, other people looking at you like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Like, oh, you're, you're not going to be as pretty or you're not going to be as feminine and, you know, all this other crap that gets to you a little bit. So you kind of have a bit of a roller coaster where you're like, okay, well, maybe I won't work out as hard or, or what have you, which, you know, you look back on now and it's hilarious. Um, but even still to this day, you know, I'm in a really strong mental position, which is great. I'm super proud of that. Um, but I still do get a lot of hate. You know, people will tell you anything and everything that doesn't even matter. You know, even recently I had someone tell me, if you want to be a man that bad, you might as well just do it or kill yourself. And I was like, who the heck are you to tell me that? Like, I love what I do. So, you know, some people that may have heard that, if I heard that in the beginning of my journey, I think I probably would have been a little bit more fragile, but now I can just laugh. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's like, if anyone told me like, you're not going to be as pretty, I'd be like, you thought I was pretty in the first place. That that's it. That's just me too. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's, but yeah, that whole thing is just, yeah, that to me is just the most impressive part about getting through, you know, and living this lifestyle is just dealing with all that stuff too. Because I mean, unfortunately, but fortunately, like I said, it has been getting, you know, a little bit better, I think as the years have gone on, but there still is just that, that element of people that just do not understand this. But I also love to talk genetics on this podcast because I hear this all the time. I want, I want his arms. I want her abs. I want their back. People do not understand that if you work out just like a person, you eat just like them, you're not going to get the same results. It's just not going to happen. But also on top of that, whenever someone first gets started working out, they always have that one body part that really, really takes off. They don't have to train as much. And they have that one body part that just drags behind that they have to train to oblivion to get to catch up. My back was the thing that took off for me. I'm 6'3", so my legs and my lower body, I could inject pure muscle into my legs and they wouldn't gain an ounce. I mean, and they're I just, like, no, sorry. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So what was one body part for you that took off when you got started? And what was one body part that you just basically have to train to oblivion? Yeah, so um, I don't know. Maybe you, you've you seen um, anything that I've posted. But um, my, my legs for sure were one thing that, I didn't train quads really my entire prep this year even. And they were just stupid. Like my quads and my arms, you know, I don't train biceps or anything at all. My arms are huge. It's one thing. Give us a gun, Joe. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah. Like these guys like. Jesus. Really just showed up. I was even going to tell you, cause like you've, you've shown some of your posts on things. I was like, like, she could be like physique really if she wanted to. So like, what is she like? So yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta watch myself sometimes when it comes to my my quads and my arms because they'll just explode. Um, but you know, I, I think something that I've struggled with um, would probably be, gosh, I want to really think my my posterior chain's a bit tough, like really getting my lower back just 
doesn't matter what I do. It's like, eh, we're, we're, we're doing our best and I will train it to oblivion. I've been training it to oblivion and it's coming, but definitely slower than the rest for sure. So the gym bro in me, when you say that, like you don't train arms or anything like that, I just cringe and I just want to kind of like throw up. How do you deal with that? Because for me, like not being able to train arms, I don't know if I would be able to function as a, especially as a male, just that male mindset of just just, just arms. That's how guys communicate with each other in the gym, basically. It's just like doing curls, basically. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. A little, an eye to each other. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, You you working out? Me too. Um, No, see, I haven't had that problem because. I mean, as much as occasionally I like to ego lift, um, especially when there's a young little boy in the gym just mouthing off, I'm the first person that's going to probably outlift him. Um, But we don't have that with girls, you know, where you got to, you're doing the bicep curls and you're like, oh, I'm so strong and and doing that kind of with each other. So it's never bothered me as well as everything I do is intentional, right? So, you know, my coach can tell me to go shovel snow for 20 hours and I'm going to do it. I'll do whatever she tells me. And Hey, that's a great back workout. I don't care what anyone says. Like, if you're not from a place where it snows a lot, shoveling snow is one of the best back workouts you'll ever get, first of all. Oh, yeah. You get a little bit sweaty, too, and phew. Yep. So... Hey, yeah. I, that's great that, I, I mean, that's, that's one of the few things that I think women enjoy a little bit more than men when it comes to working out is the fact that, you know, like, you don't have to worry about, you know, the arms as much, whereas a guy, it's like, oh, my God, they got, like, a half a centimeter smaller. Like, what the hell is going on? So, I, I mean, you got that, but... I mean, also on top of this lifestyle too, the nutrition is one thing that is not talked about as much as it should be. It's talked about a little bit, but it's like that accounts for so much of that overall package that people end up – and they don't understand that. I mean, I still have friends who today, God bless them, they think they can go have McDonald's two or three times a week and still be in shame. It's like, yeah, well, because we're 27. You know, call me in five years and tell me how it's going out for you. But what were some yeah. of the bigger nutritional changes that you made? Um, Yeah, so – that's, a, that's actually a really good question. And I, I almost kind of have to think about that because I've been doing this for so long that it's second nature to me. People even, you know, they ask me all the time, like, you going to eat normal again? Or like, do you want to, do you want to have something else? Like, does it get boring? But honest to God, it doesn't at all. It's how I feel my best when I eat my structured routine meals. Um, none of that really, yeah, it didn't really have to change. I would say the only thing that had to change probably <laughs> working in a veterinary clinic, we always get treats, we always get snacks, we always get everything from owners or clients. Um, so I used to like to kind of pick at things, you know, you get a bag of M&Ms or, you know, they're they're bringing you coffee and cookies and whatever. And I am a sucker for cookies. I am a sucker, sucker, dirty, dirty sucker. I love them. So I've had to really kind of be like, okay, Shannon, you can't have it right now. But other than that, the the nutritional changes weren't weren't really significant for me. Athletic, right? That works too. And please tell me you're not one of those bodybuilders that you're like watching the Food Network and stuff like that as you're getting ready for a show and just torturing yourself. Actually, no. Okay, so my good. one of my uh, one of my best friends, um, we competed together uh, in Toronto, and she towards the end was sending me stuff all the time, and I was like, "Girl, would you just?" And she's like, "All I want are sweets," and I was like, "No, you don't. All you want is a medal." <laughs> I never got that about some of the comparisons I have on where they live on the food network and it's like that yep. you're just torturing yourself. Like, why would you, why would you, so, Hey, but I mean, if it, if it, if it gets it through, it gets in through and where do you think you sort of got, cause I think a lot of people are just born with sort of that drive that they're willing. Cause like when you're in, when you're in prep and you have those days, everyone has those days where you don't want to work out and where you're just dead tired. I just think it's something that just people might, you're kind of born. There's a certain type of people that does bodybuilding. It's a lot of type A and it's a lot of, you know, like I need to get, you know, like this workout done. But where do you think that drive really came for you when it comes to, you know, just, I need to do this. Cause that's the one thing that separates bodybuilders from the general public is the people that the general public are the ones that are just be like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. And then that tomorrow turns into next week. And then but the bodybuilders are the one like, I'm getting this done right now. Yeah. No matter what. I mean, from an early age, honestly, a lot of it comes from my upbringing. Um, you know, in, in a good way. Uh, my mom will be the first person to tell you that I'm, she pushed me always. You're always to be the best in everything you do. You excel in school, you excel in your sports, whatever you try to tackle, you better be good at it. And, you know, it sounds a little bit detrimental and and probably growing up, it, it caused a little bit of issues. Right. Um, but now, especially it's rolled over into everything in my life, you know, when it comes to the drive that I do with bodybuilding, you know, I want to be the best. I'm going to do everything it takes. And, um, you know, a big thing that I've taken from my mother and now is the word intention, right? Everything you do is intentional. So if you want to do something, you better do it right. Um, and that snowballed into my career too, you know, 
it's it's been able to allow me to excel in that with extra certifications and you know my masters and things like that so it's uh it's something that was just ingrained into me at, a, at an early age and you know you mentioned the type a personality that is so me my uh, my boss likes to say that i am intense but in the best way possible and you know it's it's one of the best traits about me apparently so <laughs> whereas other than me working 11 to 7 monday through fridays when i get up it's literally anything could happen today it's just like yeah whatever whatever happens happens no way as no soon way. as i as soon as i got that diploma from college i said i am never going to another classroom again. I am never listening to another human being tell me to do homework ever again. I'm never doing that. So whenever someone tells me they got their master's, I'm like, okay, that's that's a special kind of person right there. Because it's like, for me, that was like the greatest day of my life was the day when I was like, I don't have to do this anymore. And then I got a job where I have a boss that is kind of like a teacher. So, you know. I would be in school forever if I could. I love learning. That's one of the great things with my career is that we have to. I have to have a certain amount of continuing education every single year to keep my license. And I'm always blowing that out of the water because I just I love to learn. I'm such a nerd that way. Well, you can tell by my hyperactivity. Do you really think I did well sitting in a chair for an extended period of time in a classroom? Do you really think that worked? <laughs> yeah. So let's just do that. Like if there was a different way to that, maybe, but yeah, like, yeah, let's sit in a class for six and a half hours a day, you know, basically and see how Ryan does with that. So you know, that's just, that's, that's a recipe for disaster right there. So, you know, yeah, it's just, it's just for some people, but I mean, especially being that we're in the the dog days of winter where it's just cold as all hell how do you keep that motivation to go and work out because if anyone that is living in the cold weather knows like basically your body's just telling you let's just sit by the fire and just have a cup of hot chocolate all day basically yeah i mean the mo the word motivation obviously is the one that wavers the most especially when i my alarm's going off at 5 30 in the morning it's dark as dark can be it's freezing and i'm like i do not want to get up but i do it because of my intention, because of my discipline, you know, the days that I don't want to go to the gym, I just worked, you know, a 14 hour shift. It was the worst thing ever. I'm mentally spent, but guess what I'm going to do? Go to the gym because that's my happy time as well as I know I'm going to feel better. So I just push my ass and I go. One plus having a big ass dog to lying next to you is probably going to wake you up too, no matter what. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the problem. He is not a morning person. I'll tell you that she's under the blankets with just her snoot sticking out. I get up and she looks at me like, <laughs> see ya. my dog's the exact opposite. I will get licked on the face at like four in the morning. And then it's like, I let her out and then I go back to bed till like 10 or 11. If I ha if I can help it or something like that, but. Yeah, that is that is difficult. But I mean, the hardest thing of this lifestyle, and I don't care what anyone says, is posing for so many of the guests that I've had on. Most oh, people, yeah. Most people do not understand that. Most people, if you were to ask them, they'd say probably, oh, it's the nutrition or oh, it's the working out. They just don't understand. That. What has your experience with posing been like? Oof, it's it's, uh, you know, across the board, like you're saying, like a blanket statement underrated. Like you have to work on it all the time, not just when you're in prep, not just when you're shredded, because you know what, you're not going to be ready, you got to be up there, you want to do it like a second nature, you don't want a single thing to shake, you don't want to be up there being like, I can hold it just a little bit longer. Now you want to go up there and be like, yeah, I can do this in my sleep all day, every day, like it's the most important thing. Um, most of my posing, actually, I've, I've been really lucky, knock on wood was self taught. And you know, I've had my coach, um, she, she tweaks and helps me with things. Um, but this year going into my pro debut, I'm actually going to be working with somebody for posing just for those little last bits. You know, there's always stuff that you can work on and I want it to be perfect because at the end of the day, your posing can make or break it. Like, you know, you could look the exact same, like down to every single ounce of fat or striation that you have as the person next to you. And if they pose like crap and you pose perfect, there you go. Or vice versa. You just lost the whole thing to somebody who might be you know, a little bit less or of a physique because you look like a tool. <laughs> so you're going to, you're going to literally sit there and tell me that you got your pro card without opposing coach. I swear on my life from day one, all my posing has been, you know, from watching and learning. And I look at people that I, I really like their physiques. I like the way they present them and I go, I can try that and I'll do it that way. So <laughs> Uh, we got one of these people on the podcast. I should have done a better background check before. I invite. No, but I mean, like, yeah, you're one of the handful of people because most people when they're like, oh, I didn't have a coach posing. I just cringe a little bit deep down. I'm just like, oh, you poor thing. That's the story 99% of the time. So you're one of the outliers. You're one of the very few that actually, you know, benefited from from that at least. But so, hey, more power to you. But yeah, it's like whenever I hear that first off, I'm just like, oh, you poor thing. Whenever I hear that. But like I said, though, yeah. got to do everything. You're going to do it. You better do it right. So I watch. And I practiced and I watched and I practiced. And out of the poses that you do, what was your favorite pose and what was your least favorite pose? 
Ooh, uh, least favorite, I can say right away, um, is if I do kind of like a, like a right side relaxed, Ugh. for whatever reason, I've never been able to master that. So we actually yanked it out of my uh, routine this year because it just, it was doing me a disservice. That was making me crazy. Um, my, my favorite pose for sure is that kind of the power pose, you know, everybody just kind of you power pose and your legs are split. They are shredded to the gills and you just, you look like you mean business. That's my favorite. <laughs> well, the only benefit with you though, too, is like, so you're in figure, right? I am. Yeah. So you can't do a front double by. That's the only bullshit thing though, that I, that I don't no, like. I can't, which, you know, plays into why training biceps and curls and stuff like that don't really phase me as much. But that would be like your best pose if you did. That's the only problem, though. So it's like, I, it's, you know what, though, <laughs> anything I can do to show off my legs is where I'm the happiest because I, I think they're my favorite body part. Yeah, no, I know, I know they are. <laughs> oh, yeah, abs- absolutely. I'm Again, we're going from the gym bro in me. So anything is it might it's different yeah. from what her, she thinks. So for me, it's like, yeah, OK, what? But no, that's that's great. And I mean, that front pose like that is the hardest pose ex- for figure competitors that tell me because. It's just so hard to learn. It takes people years at to sometimes to learn that. Was that something that you picked on, you know, you know, pretty easily, or was it something that took a long time? Because for that for that pose, I mean, and that's it's also like riding your bike, where once you learn it, it's almost impossible to unlearn it. But like for so many people, that is the hardest thing when posing is that front lat spread for them. Hundred percent. There's so many little cues, right? Like little things. Like it comes down to you turn your thumb one eighth of an inch one way, and all of a sudden your lats are like bam. So it's something that took me, took me a couple of years to, to actually get, um, but we worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And I, now I feel like I can do it in my sleep. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it now, but when I first started doing it, okay. <laughs> well, and now, and now one of my favorite questions, what's your relationship like with those high heels that they make you wear? Because that's, that's another thing too, where I was just like, okay, that's just, that's torture. They're as lean down as they are and as prep frame as they are, you're making them wear high heels. It's like, come on people. Yeah, you know what? I am one of those fools that loves a good high heel. I love them on my own leisure. I'll wear a six inch pair of pumps just to see how my butt looks. And I feel happy as heck. Um, just don't walk outside on the ice with those things. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. You, you got to wear your Uggs for that. And then when you get to the place you're going, then you switch them on. Um, this year, actually, leading into the pro show, I spent a lot of time walking on the treadmill in my heels non-stop you know changing your incline changing how fast you're going so that i could do it again in my sleep i wanted to make sure that every step that i took was going to be perfect so i was uh, i was that crazy i i knew that this is what i wanted this was the goal so i did everything i could <laughs> and what is that moment like for you when you will get to walk up on that stage and you know let's be honest preps are a living hell for anyone and anyone that tells me different you know i have a psych ward that i can sign you up for and i think you really should go there then because that's a that's a serious mental Ill- yeah so it's like but like just that just getting through a prep and just being able to walk up on that stage what is that feeling like for you knowing like i've spent so much of my time you know just going through this living hell and now i can finally show off you know what i've worked so hard on yeah you know i i love being on stage um it's definitely a type of personality that i have too is I, I've always been on stage and I've always been the type that's bright and show you and, and energetic. Um, I actually got an award made for me years and years ago for uh, quote unquote, the most enthusiastic on the soccer field even. So can I just my- say from talking to her for like half an hour, I can already tell that too. Like I could have guessed that <laughs> if she would have asked me like what, what award did I win? Yeah. So yeah, definitely positivity, you know, and energy radiating out of my butt most days. Um, well, other times in prep, not so much. Uh, <laughs> But uh, this year, this year too, and I'll, I'll always kind of go back to this year because it's still pretty fresh. Um, we were sitting in our in the hotel room, and I had a, a friend of mine with me, and he's looking at me, and he's like, you know, like how are you feeling? Like, you ready? And I was so calm and so ready, and he just was like, hell yeah, that confidence is what's gonna what's gonna take it. And you know, you check all the boxes, so there's nothing to stress about. You get to go on, you get to show your thing, and that's your time to enjoy. And when I get up there, it's that's it. I'm, I'm showing, you know, what was that moment? Like when they announced your name and you realized, Oh my God, I'm a pro now. Cause for so many people that aren't that familiar with the sport, they don't realize that that's the highlight for so many of my guests that I have on just winning that pro card. Cause that's the affirmation that, you know, all the hard work that you put in, you know, you finally get to compete in the big shows. And what was that moment? Like when they, when they announced your name, you're like, Oh my God, I'm a pro now. That moment was well anticipated and something that, you know, without it sounding you know, cocky or anything. I was like, 
this is this is mine this time, you know, especially after that overall lineup. Now, mind you, <laughs> I was a little bit dizzy at one point. So I was like, oh, my God, I blew it. Um, but I didn't. So once that happened, uh, I think my entire like from beginning of figure to the that moment was just like a flash. Um, and you can see it in the photos. They're so funny. I'm, I'm literally just like a gasp. And uh, it was it was really good. I think it, it hit me the most when I stepped off a stage, called my coach and she was crying. And then I started to well up with tears. And it was like, yeah, we just did this. You know, I just got, actually, I just got chills again thinking about it. <laughs> this, uh, this bad boy for sure. You know, this is my baby. That is awesome. Yeah, that is, that is great. So what, what, what did you do after the show? Did you go and just, what did you eat? First of all, that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite questions to ask. Ah, oh, see, I'm, I'm lame in that respect. I've never been a post-show eater. Um, but, you know, like I said, I, I got to do this competition with one of my best girlfriends. Um, so she was the one who was looking at everything, had all the snacks down. She got everything you could possibly think of. The first thing we had when we got back to the room together was this cookie from One Last Crumb. I had never heard about them until now. And they are these like mega loaded, just ungodly things and I had a bite of that and I'm pretty sure I took off to another planet for a minute and uh came back down and it was amazing um but no it was just her and I went out um we just had dinner together um nothing fun I wish I had something more fun to say but you know what to to be sitting in that high so happy you know laying next to my one of my best friends was perfect so I was also one of those guys, like after a baseball, big baseball game or a football win, I wouldn't, I mean, I'd go to the parties and stuff like that, but I'd be more content with like, Hey, let's just go get something to eat and then go, you know, relax. So that I totally understand that. But I mean, one of my favorite other things to ask about too is, you know, post-show blues. Cause so many people do not understand that as well. That like, there's a big misconception that like, Oh, they must look like show ready, like 24 seven, just because they work as hard as they do. And it's like, Nope, that is not the case. You are not going to look like that. And you know, more, some people try to do that and it's like, and you shouldn't too. Yeah. It's like, let's be honest. You're not at your healthiest when you walk on that stage. That's another thing that people, a lot of people don't understand, but what was that like for you when, you know, you first realized that like, Oh my God, this look that I've worked so hard on, I'm not going to be able to maintain it. And has it gotten easier for you to accept that as your career has gone on? hundred percent. It, it gets easier with time. Um, you know, you, you know what your body requires, you know how it, it's a machine at the end of the day, right? So when you first start doing it, it's it's really hard because you see yourself at this peak and then you're like, okay, no matter how, you know, meticulous I am about the way that I'm backtracking, I'm still going to gain back weight and I'm still going to hold the water and I'm still, you know, X, Y, and Z. So at first it was super hard. And now I'm just like, <sighs> let's do it. Let's do what we're supposed to do. We always have a plan, you know, um, ready to go for the next thing. So I step off stage, I've got my um, off season plans already started. So I think a big part of that is being able to know what you're doing next. So then you're not feeling like you're off the handle, you're losing that structure that you just spent 22 weeks, you know, so regimented, and all of a sudden, you're like, now what I think that's part of the problem that people tend to endure, you know, on their own is they, they don't see how important it is to have the plan for after the show, even more so than going into it. Otherwise, then you're like, lost cause off the handles, you're unhappy with yourself, because you're not following a plan, but then you're just kind of doing, you know, x, y, and z. So yeah, I mean, and it's great that you have that plan. Because some people, yeah, they just go and they just gain like 40 pounds in like a week. And it's just like, oh, yeah, let's see what let's see what happens now. So you know, it's, it's great that you have. And I like to compare it to like starting your own business too, where it's like, you can, you can, unfortunately, you're gonna have to spend money to make money. And you know, you're gonna have to put on weight if you have to if you want to put on muscle unfortunately that just goes you know hand in hand but being a vet tech i mean and being on prep i'm sorry but if i brought in my dog i do not want you dealing with my dog if, when you're on prep brain so how do you deal with that being a veterinarian where a job where you kind of do have to be on the ball at all times well, at least when you're working kind of. yeah no not even kind of i have to at all times you know um i know that if in any way shape or form I feel like I might sacrifice the health or safety of my patients. I tap out of everything. So I've got an incredible team behind me. Um, you know, we are, we're really a family, which, you know, sounds cliche, but the girls that I work with, we are so close and we are so supportive of each other. So they always have my back. Um, now you, you had mentioned the uh, <clears throat> psych ward uh, where I should probably be because I had a great prep. My prep was, I felt great the whole time. Like it was just 
smooth sailing. Uh, the only time that I had that prep brain where I was an absolute liability was probably the last three weeks. Um, and then all I did was just tap out of anesthetic because, you know, that's something that's super important. But I was still working my eMERGE hours. I was still on call all the time. You know, I was still doing everything I normally would do. Um, and, and it never wavered, which was really important. But like I said, I know that if something, if I'm like, you know what, I'm not feeling it today, I am not going to put anybody in that position because there's lives on the line. Do you think it's more of that they actually like you or more of that, like when you look the way that you look, they're not going to say no to you when they're like, hey, I can't get these hours. <laughs> Where it's more of like, okay, just do just do what she wants. Shan, you know, she has, she has, she has carte blanche over all of us really. So yeah. <laughs> you know what? Not even about a look. Uh, they'll be the first to say to, you know, we love each other to death, but there will be the first to say that I'm, I'm the one that you don't mess with. Uh, especially, you know, if anyone tries to come for my girls, hell no, I'm so protective of my team and my family. Like pfft, no one messes with me. At least you get to be like in scrubs too. So like, you don't, it's not like always showing and stuff like that to people. So no. at least, at, at least there's that. But like, like we said before, like you're not the average looking woman. I mean, you are going to get stares and stuff. H has, how have you dealt with that? Especially has it gotten easier for you to deal with that as your career has gone on? Because I compare it to being like a mini celebrity where it's like, you're going to get stares and attention. It's just the thing. And luckily now that we're in the winter, you can sort of bundle up a little bit. And not, although I mean like some of the guests that I have on, they could wear 10 layers of clothes and it's still going to show. But like, how, how do you do a sort of that extra added attention that you get? Doesn't bother me. Um, you know, yes, it, it definitely does still happen, um, especially in the gym, you know, you're working out and then you have the middle-aged women that are looking at you like, what the hell is that? Um, and I, I just, you know, if they want to. No, that's when you tell them this is my first time ever in a gym. I do. You know what? People will come up to me and they're like, hey, like you work out or something. I'm like, no, <laughs> just to be, a, just to be a brat. But uh, no, it, it doesn't bother me. It really doesn't. And I love. If somebody is confident enough to ask me a question about it or they want to make a comment about the way I look, I love talking about it all day, any day. I think it's flattering, really, because I am a freak, quote unquote, but especially up where I'm from, you know, we are a small little town. Uh, not a lot goes on here. It's a retirement town that's just old and small. And I am one of two uh, competitors in this town, basically, that are, uh, you know, elite bodybuilders and everyone else just kind of works out and that's about it. So why don't you and the other person just start like your own professional, like moving company then basically then and that's <laughs> as a side gig or something like that. Cause that, that was the one problem with me too, that I hated about, you know, being as big as I got those that like, you are going to get asked to do so much stuff when it comes to oh. like, Oh, help me with this stuff where it becomes a liability. Let's be honest. Oh yeah. There's a, uh, you know, what's actually really funny. Uh, my, uh, my, one of my vets, um, she's so funny. We were outside bringing a dog in or something and oh, the owner God. was like, oh my God, like, are you okay? And she's all awkward. She's like, it's okay. She's our best lifter. <laughs> I totally forgot about it. It's like, yeah, if there's like an 80 pound dog. Yeah. You're just going to call. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. We're talking like the biggest ones that we've had to lift. We get these things called these borbles. They're South African lion hunting dogs. And those things mean business. They're easily like 200 pounds. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, here we go. <laughs> I work with a lot of a lot of really teeny women, strong, beautiful, intelligent women, but they're they're very small. <laughs> so I do a lot of lifting. And plus, being six three two, I get the best of both worlds too. Then where it's hey, reach for that, reach up for that for me. Reach, reach, for reach for it. You're gonna pick it up. Yeah. Oh my god, it's double edged sword. But thankfully, I'm at that age where most people have moved out and stuff like that. I still have a couple of friends who I might get a call even tomorrow from them, just being like, hey, you want to help me move stuff? And it's like, hey, well, it's the winter time, so I won't help you. But you know, if it's summertime, and that's a different, that's a different it's story. But, so sorry. Oh, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just absolutely hibernating. But I mean, I hate winter. Oh. I hate being cold. I hate the cold. I'm miserable. Yeah. If I could move to Texas. I'm I'm trying. I want to so bad, but it is very hard to get out of Canada. Be careful what you wish for. I will just I will just say that. It, it I don't enjoy the cold, but I'd much rather not be it when it's 110 degrees in August. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me. I'll sweat yeah. through anything I'm wearing. I don't care. It's so cold. Well, yeah. again, for bodybuilding, I mean, that's the best thing ever. You could just basically just sit outside that. You wouldn't even have to do cardio and you'd probably sweat off all the, nah, just, all just the stuff. Cook me. Yeah. Just cook myself in San Antonio yeah. heat. Please. Well, I mean, at least at least it's time to play hockey in, in the winter, though, at least. So that's yeah. that's at least here. So that's the only positive thing, really, there. So, I mean, that's my form of cardio during the winter, really. So, there you, go. you know, that, yep. that's really the only thing to look forward to. But, I mean, what my number one thing that I hate more than anything else is cardio. 
hate it more than life itself. And, you know, when I say cardio, I mean running. Like, I can walk for forever, but what is your relationship like with cardio? Because, unfortunately, you become a bodybuilder, you do sort of sign a deal with the devil. You you definitely do. Um, it was a love-hate for a long time, uh, mostly hate, uh, that turned into a love, thankfully. Um, I mean, I cardiovascular health was always good with me, you know, with sports. So it was no problem. It was just doing it. I used to get so bored. I was like, Oh my God, I've been on the stairs for 30 minutes going nowhere. This is ridiculous. But as you get used to it, as you realize, okay, this is why you're doing it. And then I started, you know, watching videos on my phone or, or doing other things and learning other things while I was doing it. And the next thing you know, you're like, Oh crap, it's been an hour. Cool. And then you move on. Now, some days I don't want to do it. I'm not going to lie to you. Some days I'm literally staring at the machine and I'm like, there's got to be a way that I could just like do this through osmosis. Like if I touch you, can you just take the body fat? Uh, it doesn't work, by the way. Uh, I'm still working on it. Keep trying. Keep trying. I want to see results eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. Like I know there's some cool stuff that we're going to be able to do. Maybe I'll just. Remember, Edison tried to make that light bulb like hundreds of times. Okay. So, you know, you got to keep trying. <laughs> You'll get there eventually. But yeah, no, it's not so bad now. Um, I find too, the more that I keep it in my off season, the better I am when a prep comes around. Because if I start getting a little bit lazy in the off season, then you actually kind of have to rebuild that relationship. And then I hate it. <laughs> but it's. Uh, it's not so bad now. I, I actually do enjoy that time, especially in the morning. I really like it in the morning. Well, how did you with doing a prep too so close to the holidays? I mean, that must have been because for me, I mean, the holidays, that's when I'm going to gain, you know, five to 10 pounds. And, and then I spend the next two months trying to lose that weight then that I gained on. <laughs> but like, so how do you deal with that? Because I could not. Yeah. I mean, for all the preps that I could, like, first of all, I couldn't even do a prep in the first place. But if it, I had to do one during the holidays, yeah, game over. I mean, it was at the beginning, right? Um, and because with me, like I said, food isn't really a driving thing for me, so I don't really care. But that's not to say that for the last week, I didn't kind of do a bit of a free for all per se when it came to family dinners and, you know, some treats here and there or, you know, things like that were fine. But it's, you know, as long as I'm in moderation, I feel good and I'm I'm good to go from there. So we're good. <sighs> my god she's one of those people where she actually has stuff figured out you know and i'm just like oh my god. I know. You, you, you almost want me to be lying you're like oh she's she's making it up but instead i'm, I'm really serious <laughs> it's it's easy for me in that respect you know so i think that's why i'm able to excel is because i have those relationships in a good spot right well, and that, the other thing that really gets me too is because like we have sort of like the same kind of hyper mind where like we do but like you have yours under control where mine it's just like i just let it it, it, it's just bouncing all over the place. So I look at that. I was like, God, I really need to get my, I really need to get my things in gear. Cause it's like, it's like the polar opposites here. So, Hey, this is, this is as inspiring for me as it is for anyone out there listening, Perfect. listening to this out there at least. But I mean, let's be honest. Sleep is the most important thing in this lifestyle. And anyone that disagrees with me on that, I tell them pull an all nighter and then try to work out and then tell me how that goes. What is your relationship with sleep? Like, cause like, like you mentioned before you get up early and that is just one thing that I cannot deal with. Yeah, I mean, I I love my sleep. I need my sleep. I'm usually in bed well, like kind of 9, 9.30. I'm going to bed so I can get up the next morning. And if I don't, then I'm screwed for the day. Like towards the end of a prep, every everybody and their mothers will tell you, your sleep is not great. You got to do your best. You got to really, you know, get that rest time when you can take it because sleeping is really hard. Um but it is so important. So you do everything you can. You know, you have to take some Benadryl to go to sleep. Then you do it because you need to sleep. <laughs> Just punch yourself in the face a couple of times. Who knows? You know, knock, yeah. knock yourself out. Do, do. That's, that's, a, that's a last case scenario for me, too, where it's just like, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, just. And if you don't do it enough, you just get a headache, right? You got to hit yourself enough. And That's true. Well, you know, you know, it's, it's a worthwhile. No, but like that was one thing for me that I never understood until I started having guests on. It's like, you can be so tired that you can't sleep, which seems like an oxymoron in and of itself. And it's like, that's not possible. It's like, no, it actually is possible. You're really. laying there and everything hurts so much. Like your bones and your hair feel like they're glass. Like you just, you're so uncomfortable. So you can't sleep. Yeah. That's, that's also one of the best parts of prep. Okay, I'm gonna give her the psych ward stuff now. I think I think she needs to go. I'll make an appointment for. I'll even do the work. I'll okay. I'll drive her there, everyone, because I it's, it's it's for a public safety thing. No, but that's yeah. I mean, there are some little things. I mean, it's 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 amazing how we as human beings sometimes look back at things that were hard at the time, and then we're like, hey, I actually enjoyed that. Where it's I've even done that myself, and I was like, I'm I'm a little crazy, but you know, hey, it's it, it comes with the territory. But just this whole 
last year has just been so interesting with the sport where, I mean, a, a lot of people have died and a lot of people, a lot of the extremes of the sport have sort of been brought to more of the public light where I'm, I mean, I'm sure you were aware of all the stuff that go and like the extremes that people go to. And I was aware of it too, as well. But I mean, what's your reaction been like sort of just this year, just being so, you know, a lot more awareness has been brought to the sport, I think, in some of the extremes that people go for. Right. And I mean, it is an extreme sport, right? At the end of the day, it's an extreme sport. That's part of why it's still so taboo this many years, you know, down the line. It's not like bodybuilding's new. It's not at all. It's been around forever. But now with social media and things like that, we're able to actually see more of the things that are happening, right? And and be a little bit more aware of the extremes that we do take. Now, that being said, there's there's probably a lot of variables that that go with it. You know, we make the choices on our own. You know, everything that I do, I've chosen to do on my own. You know, like, yes, there's somebody who may say, hey, maybe you should try it this way or maybe you should take this. They're not shoving it down your throat. So you make those decisions too, right? So it, it's kind of hard. That's it's something that I've listened to a lot of podcasts about lately, you know, Um when people are saying, you know, what can we do in the IFBB to make it better? Or what can we do so this stops happening? Well, is, is there even anything you can do? It's 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 the nature of the sport a little bit, right? So I, I don't know where my opinion stands on that necessarily, but I think that we make the choices. So it, it's hard. Obviously, it's it's sad no matter what. I think it's god awful, but Oh, I mean, it would be so much more easier to change things if, like, coaches were, like, literally, like, forcing stuff down people's throats and stuff like that and just being, like, exactly, you have right? to, yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah, just like what you were saying, but it's, like, yeah, it's so much more gray than that where it's just, like, yeah, it's just, it, you know, and it's people, and again, I, I have no qualms about anyone and anything that they do just because I know that it still takes hard work. There's not one magic pill that fixes everything because, trust me, once it does, I'd be the first person to buy that thing, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you know, hey, you know, it's just... It's just because it is just this lifestyle is just so unique as opposed to any other lifestyle really that people can live that it's just so not that many people know about. So I, I just love to bring that up. And, you know, it's great that, you know, you seem to have at least a level head on your shoulders, except for liking parts of your prep, which I mean, that's that's a red flag. That's a red flag. But, you know, hey, also I'll keep that noted. But I mean, if someone were to walk up to you and say, you know, Shannon, we made the decision. You can change one thing about the sport of bodybuilding and everyone would go along with it. What would be one thing that you'd like to see changed? That is a really, really good question. Um, I mean, if if I could off the top of my head, I guess, because that's something that I almost need to think about, I might even message you later and be like, that's not what I would change. We um, can re-record it, everyone. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> off the top of my head, I think the one thing that I, I dislike the most is they have the set criteria. Doesn't mean boo sometimes. You're like, what what the hell did you just pick? Like, what are you going off of? And it's so different. You know, one weekend you could go to a show, win the whole show. You go the next weekend, you look the exact same and you come damn near dead last. And you're like, why? I look the same. Like, I don't get it. That is my least favorite thing for sure is that it's, it's objective sometimes or, or subjective Sorry, And you're, you get the one person that's like, eh, I, I she looks great, but I, I kind of like the blonde better. And you're like, I don't care. You're going off of what you're like, I can be blonde too. Just give me some bleach and let me go to the bathroom real quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Would you just, I, I just, oh God, that's the one thing that makes me mental sometimes. And I think it's, it's definitely seen more in the female categories than the males. I, I, I find personally anyways, but you can have this set criteria. You could knock every single box off. You're not going to win because the person next to you that's got two boxes checked just happens to win. And you're like, what the? <laughs> oh, yeah. For for guy belly building, you don't have to be pretty to win For if you're a guy. Like for females, you kind of have to do because a lot of it they do. It's They add like a tenth of it being like a beauty pageant kind of thing where it's like you have to look good. Where yeah, if you look at the guys like Arnold, I'm sorry. He was not that attractive of a guy when he was winning when he was winning his stuff. If you really like, look deep down at him. So it's just, just like. Kind of cover him like that a little bit. Yeah. Like, you look in yeah. so good. But then, you know, you have the mask. Come, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's another thing too, especially with the female thing where it's like they work just as hard and they're judged just a little bit differently. Where For me too, it would be prize money too because it's like some of these people, it's like that if you are a pro bodybuilder, you should be able to do that just as your job. That should be just your job then. But, you know, that's a that's a whole, you know, different thing. That's a whole other can of worms there. Oh, oh my God. We, we'd be talking for 10 more hours. Yeah. If we, oh, if, yeah. If, they've if they've, they've increased the Arnold prize purses for the guys this year by like $70,000, like extra on top. But the girls are like, 
here's your pen- here's a couple pennies. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? yeah. you can get a night you can get a nice diet coke from the stands or something like that. Yeah. So no, yeah, yeah that's yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's that's that again. Yeah, that too as well. And I mean when it comes to I love to, you know, spread some motivation to it and stuff. So what's the best piece of motivation that you like to give people just to get started in their, you know, fitness journey? Because for so many people, just taking that first step is the hardest thing. Yeah, absolutely. I think people underestimate how good they're going to feel. You know, they, they are getting too worried about, well, someone's going to see me or, or, you know, I don't know how to get started. And you know what? No one cares. I can assure you, you're going to walk into a gym and no one's really paying attention. And if they are, they're probably not the people that you care about anyways. Um, and there's so many resources out there that don't be afraid to ask the questions and and take a look at all the resources online. Like there's so many things like it's it doesn't need to be so intimidating. Just just get started and you are going to feel so much better. You know, that's that's something that I think people don't realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to the gym and you're gonna get a little bit more fit. But what it does physically and mentally is crazy. Oh, my God. And like I always tell people, do not go full Rambo. The first couple nope. of weeks, I've God. had so many people make that mistake where they, yeah, I'm going to go work out for like three, four hours a day for like a week now. And then they last a week and then they never work out for the rest of their lives. And it's like, you have to pace yourself. This isn't just one thing where you can just be like, yeah, the more I work out, the better it's going to be. So I have to sit people down and tell them that because yeah, unfortunately I have even had friends that have done that where they're like, I, I worked out three hours and I was like, don't ever do that again. They're like, well, I've already done it. And I was like, fine. I'll call you, I'll, I'll text you in a month and then we'll see where you're at. And then they're just like, yeah, oh yeah, I haven't worked out in like two, three weeks. So, yeah. No, hundred percent. No, I always, I always, 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 when people ask me about that, I recommend, you know, get started slowly, you know, do a couple days a week or, you know, do 10, 20 minutes of, of, of cardio here or there. Like you can't just go like balls to the wall with it because where are you going to go from there? And then you're going to make yourself, you know, you can't move, you're sore, you don't know what you're doing, you get hurt, things like that. So Definitely. Yeah. Slow and steady for the love of all that is holy. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, if, when we talk to you, you're from today, cause I'd love to have you on again. You were a great guest. Where would you like to be at in just your bodybuilding journey? Where'd you like to just be at in your overall life? Where are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when we talk to a year from today? Yeah. Oh gosh. A year from today. Um, I want to, you know, make a, make a splash in my pro debut. That's going to be really important. Um, I want to be able to go on that stage and be, you know, competitive. That's really important to me. I don't just want to be another person that turns pro that's like, eh, you know, yeah, you turn pro, but like, are you really there yet? You know, I want to get up with the big dogs and I want to be in it. You know, that's, that's really important to me. So eventually, you know, maybe not even a year, but I've got two goals that I've had, you know, my, my one goal actually I've had since 2014. I want to be on that Arnold stage. I don't care if I'm placing dead last, I want to be on the stage. And then, you know, down the line, is the Olympia, but we're all, we all have that, right? I want to grace that stage, but I want to be able to, to get up there and be competitive and, and make a splash for myself. You know, it's really important. Absolutely. And again, you guys, I mean, Shannon, we cannot thank you enough for coming on and, you know, sharing your journey with us. And do you have anyone that you'd like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? You bet I do. Honestly, for the last, well, since I started this journey in 2014, the most important asset I've had in my corner is my coach and my really good friend, Alicia Mills. She's also an IFBB figure pro. There is no chance in heck any of this would be possible without her. She is the best asset that I have. You know, she's there for me at any hour, all the time. She cares about every level head to toe in and out it's not just you know here's my athlete we're gonna make her look good we're gonna ram a bunch of drugs down her throat and that's that it's everything she wants to know how you're functioning how you're doing she wants it to be perfect and i could not do it without her um so she's my most important asset you know and my my sponsors helped to get me here too uh evo fit suits um you know beth from from fargo north dakota i've had her on yeah she's great yep she is a absolute doll. I love her to death. You know, she's been behind me for years. Could not do it without her. Couldn't do it without pump supplements. You know, they help get me everywhere. And uh, it's really important to have a good circle. You know, my circle has been the best thing that I could have. You can't, you can't excel in a, it's an individual sport, but you cannot excel without a circle. You can't. Well, and like we talked about the hyper, the hyperness that we both have. Are you one of those people where you have to take pre-workout? Because for me, like, I, I'm i afraid of taking ever taking pre-workout because I don't know what's going to do to me. Like, I barely have ever drink coffee because then I just become a psychopath, really. But so are you one of those people where you don't take as much or are you one of those people where you just like, give me all the stuff that I need to, to be able to to be able to get through a workout and wake up? 
Yeah, good question. I've actually broken myself. Uh, I drink a lot of coffee. I actually, when I say coffee, I mean, I'm an espresso drinker. So if I'm going to take pre Lace with like cocaine and all that stuff. Yep. I know what you're yeah, doing. <laughs> you kind of that in between, you know, like a little bit, it's less than cocaine. It's more than coffee. You kind of find that balance. Um, if I take pre-workout, it is the highest stim. I'm taking a whole thing, just going and giving her. Um, but no, I actually, uh, pre-workout, not really a thing when it comes to those types of supplements. I'm eh, 50, 50 of what I take, but, uh, yeah, no ca caffeine, uh, is basically part of who I am. Yeah. Yeah. But like for me, if I were to take what you were taking, that's the equivalent of a normal person, like putting a stick of dynamite up their butt and then lighting the fuse really basically. So yeah, that's the, I mean, Hey, for the safety of the public, I have not done that. So, you know, you're, you're, your you're, you're welcome everyone. So yeah, it's just, <laughs> Oh my God. Like I can't, I've, I've had a few times where I've drank coffee where like literally I could run through a door if I wanted to really. And just, and just, so yeah, I know the feeling, but again, you guys, Shannon, we cannot thank you enough for coming on and, you know, sharing your journey and for seeing your dog as well. That was another highlight of the journey, but of the, of the podcast, but again, thank you so much. And you know, I, I oh, yep. We, we get to see him again. We got to see him again. Yep. Our guys too, eh, oh, oh no. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, she's got to get her croissant. Oh, yep. God, that is a big old dog. Yeah. That is awesome. All right. Well, again, everyone, Shannon, thank make you. A cameo, but oh, you have a, you. you have a cat too. Yeah, that's Kevin. Kevin the cat. Hey, Kevin. Oakley the dog and Kevin. Do they get along or do they have a rivalry? They love each other. They they get a they get a little rivalry when it comes to attention, but they're they're besties. Yeah. All right. Well, that that is awesome. And again, you guys, Shan, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Well, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>